jokes keep going too far. <laughs> because this person is making a lunch packing video and it seems normal at first, alright? Until they whip out the raw okra and dump it in their bento box like that's normal. But then, to make matters even more bizarre, she takes an entire packet of flowers for some unknown reason to pair with the slimy vegetable. And obviously, all meals need a sweet treat afterwards, okay? So of course we're gonna let an entire cup of Lucky Charms soak in an entire cup of milk and then individually place even more flowers into the bento box with miniature tongs instead of just using our fingers or pouring it out of the bag. But now, we're gonna <laughs> mush up our soggy cereal and place it on the side to leave in our warm bag all day. <laughs> Yummers, am I right? What kind of mystical fairy woodland creature from an ancient folklore kind of lunch is this? <laughs> you know when you're playing an RPG like Skyrim and you're in the middle of a boss fight? So you pause the game to eat whatever random food items you have in your inventory to heal up as much as you possibly can? That is essentially what this meal is. Then, in this video, this woman is packing her bag for a weekend getaway and she packs 12 individual bags of products from her entire vanity table, which include 15 separate hairbrushes! Every single one of her makeup products, several hair care bottles, body sprays, her extensive skincare routine, and an entire bag dedicated to just her hair clips! Where are your clothes? Your shoes? Your dental hygiene, your bathers in case you go swimming, your phone charger, some goddamn clean underwear or some clean socks. I mean, you didn't even pack any deodorant. So you may look good, but you're certainly not gonna smell good, babe. I can tell you that. A suitcase for a getaway should not look like this. Unless you plan to sit in the hotel for the entire trip while everyone else that you went on the trip with is outside having fun and doing activities, then you do not need to be taking this many products with you. Now, prepare yourselves for this self-care night video because the amount of time and product being used in this single video is genuinely Hands down, the most unrealistic routine I've probably ever covered on this channel. As she removes her fake nails that look perfectly fine, oils her cuticles, then places fluffy bracelets on her wrist that serve absolutely no purpose, a spray of Touchland sanitizer for some reason, then a coconut sugar scrub, and a heaping of literal frostbite to scrape, you know, just for the vibes. And then she puts an ungodly amount of whipped cream onto her hands and even more onto a brush to scrub despite the fact that it was just on her hands that she was also scrubbing her nails with. And then, on this plate shaped like a clam, we're adding even more coconut oil with... What is, what is this? Some sort of juicy pearl that she can snap and add the juice and the oil into the into the cream. Then after brushing that onto her hands, she's sliding her hands into a mask, then taking a snack break with a suspicious glittery drink and shimmery mashed potatoes. What was in that bowl? What? <laughs> then, and we keep going, she dumps her hands into a wax melt for what purpose? I don't know. And to put the cherry on top of the 16 billion layers of icing we have on the cake, we're topping our hands off with even more cream and oil. Can I say something? The end result doesn't really look anything all that different to a person who just regularly files their nails and moisturizes every day. This is too much, even for a hand model. And to some degree, this has to be harmful to your skin, right? Because there was an article written by an industry professional on how to take care of your hands like a model that linked two products! So I don't see how 90% of what was in that video is necessary! Now, I have never seen a video like this in my entire life. A woman restocking her fiancé's man drawer. <laughs> where she puts BALL DEODORANT IN THERE! BALL DEODORANT! Next to some spearmint gum and some BALL TONER! What? What is this? Am I on planet Earth? Any BALL What is this? What is it? 
do? For what purpose? Then we're putting individually wrapped wipes in there when you could just buy one 100 pack of baby wipes. And then Mentos for some reason? Why are we putting food items in the bathroom, babe? Is he eating them in the shower or something? And why in God's name are you putting sticks of beef jerky into the same drawer as hand soap and Q-tips? Those items do not belong together. You have to separate them in different rooms. Oh my God. But have any of you ever had the urge to eat an entire stick of beef while you're on the toilet? I don't think so. Not just that, but these are men we're talking about here, okay? That perfect organization you got going on there, that's gonna be destroyed in about mm -hmm, 48 hours. This is my dad's man draw in my parents' bathroom. It has toothpaste, cans of deodorant, some vitamins, moisturizers, cleaning products, and his shaving kit. Is it aesthetically pleasing? Is there food in there for him to munch on? No, because it doesn't need to be. It's just not realistic to have this in the slightest. Now, this is quite literally just the actual on paper, literal definition of overconsumption. Because I understand that you're trying to be supportive, but I think there needs to be a limit. Because you've just bought two stuffed bags worth of groceries for this. No other groceries, just his gaming snacks. Funfetti popcorn, an actual charcuterie board that people only make for an entire party of people who have come over for the Super Bowl or for a New Year's Eve party. Not to run doors on Fortnite. But it doesn't stop there because she makes another platter of snacks filled with baby carrots with lemon juice, celery sticks, seaweed, and pistachios with a variety of dipping sauces and several different kinds of chips. But it doesn't stop there, again, because the mini fridge that he has in this room is also being restocked to the brim. This is extremely unnecessary. That is enough food to feed a family hosting a July 4th barbecue. Why is this all going to one man? And especially when he's just sitting there playing video games. When he's locked into the game, he's going to literally forget about the food because he's concentrated on the game and you can't eat and use a controller at the same time. So a majority of this food is literally just gonna go to waste because it's gonna get warm, it's gonna get soggy. Is he ever coming out of his room with food served like this in this amount and drinks at his fingertips like this? When my dad and my brother are playing video games and my mum is cooking dinner, she doesn't bring it upstairs to them so that they can keep playing the game. She calls them down and makes them get their dinner from downstairs. They sit at the table because she's just done a favor for them. Look, they do need to get out of that room a little while sometimes, all right? POV, you promised your toddler a party when they're fully potty trained and they've got Poop emoji balloons, yellow balloons for pee, <laughs> a sign that says party till you're pooped, a bunch of diapers scattered across the table, and toilet themed cake with matching cupcakes. This is honest to God, one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life. Is this situation something to be proud of and relieved about? Of course. But this is too much! Can you imagine walking downstairs in the morning for school and your mum has put an entire pack of Huggies baby wipes and poop straws all on the table for you to stare at while you eat your breakfast? Today I'm restocking my four-year-old's bathroom. Pause! <gasps> that is a sentence that has never left a singular mother's mouth in the history of planet Earth. Your four-year-old already has her own bathroom? Growing up, I shared a bathroom with my older sister and my younger brother. And now that she's moved out, I still share a bathroom with my younger brother as a 20 year old. First I got her this toothpaste dispenser that is so cute. Then I got her a new tabletop organizer so I can organize all of her things. She loves to do her hair and paint her nails so I put a few things in. She also loves to do her makeup so I try to find clean makeup for her to try. And then in the drawer I also added a few more makeup items and of course her favorite Laneige lip balm. Next in again but did i hear that correctly 
Laneige. This kid already has Laneige and I didn't even know how to pronounce that up until watching this video just yesterday. When I was a kid, there was no such thing as a trip to Sephora to buy $30 designer lippies. We're obsessed with the soda themed lip smackers. What happened? Next I got these pink canisters so I could add in some floss picks, princess band-aids because they're the only ones she'll use, and I got her some new hair ties because she's been trying to do a ponytail on her own. I also got her a new pink toothbrush that I'm really excited about. Lastly, I got her a soft pink bath mat and I wanted to put in some new shampoo and conditioner for her to try. Let me know if you want to see her reaction. There were houses that I lived in growing up where all members of my family, all five of us, were sharing one bathroom. So this is genuinely bizarre for me to watch. Especially since she also has a 20 month old, so a two year old, that also has her own bathroom when she's been on this planet for two years. And her own Laneige lip balm as well. A two year old can barely eat or read on their own, so why do they have these things? When you realize you still have remnants of your 2019 aesthetic style that costs you $13 to replace. All right, mid video game time, guys. Let's play Spot the Difference. See if you can tell how absolutely goddamn unnecessary this purchase was because nobody that comes over to your house gives a damn about what jar you have your sugar in. But actually, let me correct you there. This cost you nothing to replace because this didn't need to be replaced. You wasted $13 on this because you wanted to. You cared more about an aesthetic that you will most likely get sick of within the next five years just like you did with your previous aesthetic. My family and I still use jars to hold tea bags and sugar in that we bought during our move in like, what, 2018? Would they fit the current trend right now? Would they fit an aesthetic right now? I don't know, I'm quite frankly, I don't care. They do their job just fine, so I don't care how they look. They don't need to be replaced, so why would I buy more of them? Then, we have this person who's restocking their Stanley for their hangover. And for some reason, they use a mini Stanley that they're attaching to their existing Stanley to hold their Tylenol tablets in. And then they put nicotine gum on the handle with their goddamn vape attached to the Stanley. Your hand is supposed to go there for you to sip the drink, not your vape. Do you think Stanley regrets their creation? And then she whips out her giant ninja freeze to make a Red Bull slushy, cause that's gonna make you feel great on a hangover, isn't it? And finally, to top it all off, she orders a bunch of McDonald's to put on the very top of the cup as if it already didn't come in its own packaging. Dude, what the hell is happening? What am I watching? I have so many questions. Why are we putting painkillers that were already in a tiny container into an even tinier container when we could have just taken the original bottle of Tylenol with us because it, it, it's like it fits in the palm of your hand. Why are we putting the goddamn vape on the handle that we have to use to drink out of the cup onto the cup when it's literally a handheld item? You hold it with your hand to vape. Why, why is it on the cup? Why are you packing Zin? onto the cup when it already comes in its own miniature container. What is this in even for? It's not gonna make you feel better. It's nicotine gum. What? <laughs> Besides the Tylenol, not a single item on this cup is going to cure your hangover. Don't do any of this because it's not gonna make you feel better at all. This is most certainly gonna make you feel worse. And lastly, this video just bewildered me because who has the money to have an entire closet dedicated to mini travel essentials that need to be restocked because she buys disposable face towels that are individually wrapped in so much plastic and a bunch of deodorant wipes that are also individually wrapped instead of buying just one travel sized roll on deodorant more shampoos and conditioners when she hasn't even used the other bottles in there yet. Six packs of toothbrushes when she could just buy a tube to pack the toothbrush that she already uses at home with her so that she doesn't have to buy more. And then more skincare that she didn't need because there was already skincare in there. And even more individually wrapped wipes when baby wipes already exist. We just discussed this. You do not need, like, 
80% of this. The most I've ever taken with me on my flight is my face wash from home so I can clean up before we land and a travel sized mouthwash to freshen up before we land. Everything else can be bought if you need it when you land. Doesn't need to be bought from Amazon, babe. Also, does nobody just take advantage of hotel amenities anymore? Like, they're there for you to use. Guys, just stop buying more than you need. I understand wanting to stock up for the future, but sometimes y'all are stocking up on the wrong damn things. Canned food is a good thing to stock up on because it's gonna last you for years. But a Bed Bath & Body Works moisturizer is going to expire and you will have to throw it out eventually because it can't be used. So stock up on what matters. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Mwah. I love you all so much and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!